so everybody gets mad at me. I, I would have done it in the first term because I think if he demonstrated that type of leadership, he'd have won by 10 points, not five points or four points. He'd have won by 10 points. Secondly, he certainly can do it now. Good Lord. <laughs> Solve the problem. Don't worry about, you know. I mean, I think the thing that's wrong is I think that all we Democrats now are thinking that we'll just beat the living daylights out of them and win the 2014 election, we'll take back the House, and then we can do whatever we want. Th that's foolhardy. One, because we can't wait for another two years. The economy can't wait. And two, because there's no guarantee that it'll work. And three, it's mean-spirited on other issues. I mean, we need to pass, in my judgment, I say this in the book, not only do we need to pass debt relief, we need to pass a decent jobs bill that includes infrastructure and energy independence. We need to do something about education. We need to do something about climate change, and we need to do something about immigration and guns. That's a jam-packed agenda. If we just bull our way through the debt thing, it's going to poison the atmosphere for everything else. If we show that we can work together and get a decent deal on debt, it might open up the ability to do something on all those other issues as well. And if we do the, if President Obama took care of those issues in his second term, I think he'd go down as one of the great presidents of all time. So that's what I would do. Last question? Going back to defense and spending, uh, which countries, if any, should we defend? And what would be the criteria? Oh. <laughs> and, and the second part is, what should have our, our response been to 9-11? Well, let me, the easier question is the second 9-11. Our response, we should have gone into Afghanistan and rooted out uh, Al-Qaeda, no question, and the Taliban. Um, but what we should have done is President Bush, Friday after, or maybe Thursday after 9-11, should have gone on the air and said, ladies and gentlemen of America, we're going to war. We're going into Afghanistan and we're going to get the people who did this to our people who literally invaded the United States. But wars cost money. And I know we passed a tax increase, I mean a tax decrease, to help all of you uh, use a little bit of your money to deal with some of the things that you need to deal with, but we can't afford that tax increase right now. So I'm gonna ask the Congress to suspend that tax increase. When the war is over and our troops are back, I'll ask the Congress to reimpose that tax decrease, that tax cut, but we need to sacrifice as Americans so we can wage this war. We would have done anything President Bush asked us to do that Thursday. We would have done anything, happily. All he asked us to do was shop. That's all he asked us to do. We would have done anything he asked us to do. So that was that. Uh, in terms of what I would uh, do, what, again, I really do have no interest in running for president. And I say that in the book, my only goal is to help Hillary get elected president. But. Uh, and the reason I have no interest in running for president is I don't know how many years I have left on this earth, but I don't want to spend three of them in Iowa and New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to the Hawkeye State or the Granite. Rick Santorum told me he did 107 town meetings in Iowa. Now, you know how screwed up our system, our primary system is. I talk about this in the book also. 107 town meetings in Iowa. He spent a year and a half in Iowa. If he had lasted to the bitter end, they would have spent less than a week, he and Romney, in California. They spent a year, 18 months in Iowa, less than a week in California. Stunning. But it's, so I'm not sure I'm, I know enough about it to, to make that decision. What I would, the only, if I were president, the only place that I would deploy American troops are, if it really was, no BS, in America's security interest. If there was a reason, a, a real clear-cut reason why fighting in a foreign land would protect or enhance our security decidedly. No BS reason, you know, no weapons of mass destruction or anything like that. And that would be very limited. It would be hard for me to envision a reason for that, to fight a ground war with American troops. The second reason is I would contemplate taking military action, not necessarily a ground war, to, pre pre to prevent genocide. I think President Clinton did it in, in Kosovo. Uh, he never got from the Muslim world the thanks that he deserved. President Clinton kept a half a million uh, Albanian 
Muslims, Kosovars, from being executed. And, he, and we took action against the European government. Um, the Muslim world gave us no credit for that. But I would have done that. I would have been more active in Somalia. Uh, again, not necessarily with ground troops, but with air power, with weaponry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to be clear that you're preventing genocide. So, for example, I thought President Obama did the right thing in Benghazi. It was clear that the, those people were going to get slaughtered. It was absolutely clear. And again, I don't know if we get credit. I think we do get credit because you remember after the Benghazi incident, the, the, the recent one, there were spontaneous demonstrations backing America by the people of Benghazi because they know what we did for them. Um, so those would be the rare occasions that I would use military. And again, if one of our allies was invaded, if Israel was invaded, if, if uh, you know, uh, if Britain was invaded or something like that, but that's not likely to happen, you know. Uh, so those would be the very limited conditions. I mean, the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my public career was telling families as mayor that their father, husband, son, a uh, policeman or fireman was dead at the hospitals. For some reason, the, the tradition passed down, the doctors don't do that when it's a policeman or fireman. The mayor has to do that. A and sometimes the parents want you to tell the kids. It's, it's brutal. It's brutal. Um, and the second toughest thing was making the phone calls to parents of Pennsylvania National Guard within a day after they found out that their son and in one case daughter was killed, you know, you, you try to find something for them to hang their hat on, you know. And f while I was governor, I was able to say, you know, I'd say Mrs. Showalter, the, all the troops who come back tell me that we're doing great things, building schools and things that you don't hear about in the press. And, and so your son died for trying to make a, a beleaguered people free and, and have a better life. I, I couldn't say that now. Uh, how, do you, how would you begin to explain why someone's son died in Afghanistan yesterday? For what? To promote the Karzai government? To make the Af Afghans able to stand on their own? I don't care. If we left 20 years from now, they couldn't stand on their own. It's the nature of the country. There is no country. It's a collection of tribes. And God knows, I mean, I know why we went over there. We should have gone over, gotten out. We should never have gone to war in Iraq. By the way, the only thing the Iraq war will have accomplished, everyone says we have a stable Iraq. Bullshit. We have Iraq now that is a satellite of Iran. If Iran had states, Iraq would be the next state of Iran. Maliki does everything that Khomeini tells him to do. They absolutely have become a satellite of Iran. That's what we spent all those money, money about. That's what we lost 3,000 men and women for, to turn them into a satellite for Iran, the nation that's our severest enemy. Incredible. Well, thanks. I am going to be where, guys? Next, uh, sitting outside. Uh, and if you buy the book, or if you have bought the book previously and want me to sign it, I will sign it, virtually anything you want in the book <laughs> with the emphasis on the word virtually. So thank you. Okay, thank you very, very much.